Last time, we looked at what is inside of a microcontroller and introduced the central processing unit, program memory, data memory, and peripherals. In this video, we will look more closely at the microcontroller's program memory. There are two important terms used to describe program memory in embedded systems. The first is volatile memory. A memory is volatile if it loses its contents after power is removed. Next is non-volatile memory. A non-volatile memory is the opposite of a volatile memory. Non-volatile memories retain their contents after power is removed. Most embedded systems store their programs in non-volatile memory. The embedded system must be able to retain its program after it loses power. For example, if a Blu-ray player is unplugged and then plugged back in, it still knows that it is a Blu-ray player. The program inside the Blu-ray player is still there. Each of the five different types of program memories that we will look at are non-volatile. The first type of program memory we will look at is a mask read-only memory, which is typically called ROM. A microcontroller with a masked ROM program memory is fabricated with the desired program instructions permanently stored in it. Therefore, its program can never be modified. This leads to a number of serious disadvantages. It is only economical to build mask ROM in large quantities since users must contract the semiconductor manufacturer to produce a custom design. Next, the turnaround time between completing a program and receiving the fabricated MaskRom microcontroller can be several weeks or months. Also, MaskRom is impractical for research and development work since designers need to modify the contents of a memory often as they redefine a design. Finally, if a product is shipped with a faulty MaskRom, for example, there was a hidden software bug, the only way to fix it is to recall the entire product and physically replace every microcontroller and every unit that was shipped. However, MaskRom can be the least expensive program memory technology to build, and therefore it was a popular choice in the past. More recently, MaskRom has fallen out of favor and has been bypassed for potentially more expensive, but significantly more flexible program memory options. The first major improvement on masked ROM program memories was the ultraviolet erasable programmable read-only memory, also known as UV-EPROM or simply EPROM. EPROM memories can be erased by exposure to strong ultraviolet light, typically for 10 minutes or longer, and then can be reprogrammed. EPROM chip ceramic packages can be identified by the prominent quartz window, which allows the UV light to enter. After programming, the window is typically covered with an opaque sticker or label to prevent accidental erasure. EPROMs overcame some of the limitations of ROM. First, since they did not require the program to be built into the microcontroller during manufacturing, companies could purchase and keep blank EPROM microcontrollers on hand to be programmed just before they were assembled in their final embedded system. This would allow a company to make a rapid change in their program without having to wait for new mass ROM parts to be built. While this did take several minutes, it was much better than waiting for weeks or months for the new mass ROM parts to be built. EPROMs, however, did have one significant disadvantage. They required this very expensive package with the quartz window, which allowed the UV light to erase the program memory. This package cost could often be 10 times or more expensive than the microcontroller computer chip itself. For that reason, EEPROM did not become a significant replacement for masked ROM program memories. Engineers, however, quickly innovated a new way to use EEPROM memory. Instead of using the more expensive ceramic package, a microcontroller with an EEPROM program memory could be mounted inside of a traditional, opaque, significantly less expensive plastic package. This allowed companies to purchase unprogrammed microcontrollers at a cost only slightly more expensive than the mass ROM microcontrollers and probe them at the time of assembly right into their embedded system. The only disadvantage was that since the plastic packages were opaque, companies lost the ability to erase the microcontrollers and reprogram. In most cases, this was considered to be acceptable and one-time programmable or OTP program memories quickly became quite popular. The next big breakthrough in non-volatile program memories was flash memory, or simply flash. Flash memory allows its entire contents or selected sections to be electrically erased and then reprogrammed hundreds or thousands of times. Since the 1990s, microcontrollers with flash program memory have become the preferred option for most embedded system manufacturers. A final word of caution when dealing with program memories. Mass ROM parts were the most popular option for so long that ROM has become slang for all other types of program memories. 
it is quite common to hear two engineers talking about microcontrollers and ROM memory when they are actually referring to microcontrollers and flash memory. Therefore, be careful if you hear someone use the word ROM. They may not be referring to masked ROM, but to one of the other types of program memories. The most recent microcontroller non-volatile program memory that has been developed is called Ferroelectric Random Access Memory, also known as FERAM or FRAM. FRAM is a non-volatile memory that can hold data after it is powered off. In spite of the name, FRAM is not affected by magnetic fields as there is no ferrous material, that is iron, in the chip. Rather, ferroelectric materials switch polarity in an electric field but are not affected by magnetic fields. While relatively new, FRAM has several advantages compared to the older flash technology. First, FRAM has fast write times. The actual write time to an FRAM memory cell is less than 50 billionths of a second, or 50 nanoseconds. That is up to a thousand times faster than traditional flash memories. Next, FRAM memories require significantly lower voltages and lower power to reprogram than flash memories. This is very important for today's portable electronic devices. Also, the lower voltages allow the FRAM memories to be significantly more robust than previous reprogrammable non-volatile memories. Instead of a maximum of hundreds or thousands of erasing and programming cycles in a flash memory, FRAM memories can sustain trillions of such cycles. Finally, FRAM can serve as a unified memory. It can actually be used as both a program memory and a data memory, a feature that other non-volatile memory technologies cannot accomplish. This can result in much simpler microcontroller designs and usage. Because of these advantages, FRAM is poised to become the next standard for microcontroller memory. In fact, the microcontroller we have been using throughout the class has been using FRAM memory. Additional details on FRAM can be found in the bonus lecture at the end of this section. In summary, there are a number of different options for program memories and microcontrollers today. While flash memories replaced MAST ROM, EEPROM, and OTP memories in the 1990s, FRAM shows significant promise to become the mainstay program memory technology for generations of microcontrollers to come. Up next, we will look at the data memory function block that is inside microcontrollers.